At your service, sir. If I may, managing your money should not require terabytes of calculations. Allow me to present Simple Money Wins with Mr. Anthony Park. Hi, today I'm talking with my friend Dave, who recently closed on the purchase of a new home via short sale. And a lot of folks out there hear a lot of things about short sales and how they might be a good deal, but how there might be drawbacks in terms of the difficulty of the process. So I thought it'd be useful for everyone to hear Dave's story. Here we go. Dave, thanks for talking about this with me. And um, really, I just, I'm, I'm very interested in getting your perspective as somebody who's been personally involved in buying a short sale. Actually, but first, can you talk a little bit about your background with real estate so that you know, we can understand that you're a little bit more sophisticated than a normal George Moore buyer off the street? For the past 15 years, I've been involved in construction, commercial, and real estate. And uh, for the first two years of that was property management. And I, I've been involved with purchasing and um, selling maybe about eight to 10 commercial properties and three residential properties. Is that three residential properties over that span? Yes, three residential over that span. So I, I, know, I know you're not really, a, um, I didn't ask you want to be an expert on short sales, but rather, you know, for your personal experience. But to the extent that you understand it, what is a short sale? You know, can you, can you give us sort of a definition for like somebody who's never heard of it before? Yeah, my understanding is that it's when the bank allows or the mortgage holder allows you to sell the property for less than what's owed. So if, you know, if, say the owner runs into any financial issues or they'll say their property value dipped a lot more than what, um, what they bought it for and what it's, what it, what's owed, then the bank, um, and they're having, you know, a hard time paying back the loan before it goes into foreclosure they will allow you to sell it for less than what's owed. So just to give a clear example, in case anyone doesn't, you know, hasn't really wrapped their head around that, if there's a house that's worth, let's say right now the fair market value is $200,000, but they bought it at a time when the market was higher, let's say the, the, mortgage is, the balance on the mortgage is $250,000, so $50,000 more than what the house is worth, banks you know, will sometimes understand they need to cut their losses and give permission to sell the house for less than what they're owed and just kind of write it off, write off the difference. Is that, is that what your understanding is? Right. So this, this one's kind of a broad question, but um, just from a high level, how does a short sale work? Short sale that I was involved in, everybody kept telling me that it's not, that's not the norm because, you know, everybody told me that it takes a long time. The process is really drawn out. So everybody that I've talked to from brokers to sales agents to even friends that are in real estate, everybody's response is very negative. They all told me not to get involved with that, good luck with that. But for me, I mean, I was able to, I, I found it through, I found it listed on one of the websites. I can't remember if it was Redfin or Trulia or Zillow, one of those websites, but I saw, I saw a listing that had a short sale and I didn't really pursue it at first. It just happened that I ran into the sales agent that was selling that house at a different event. So that's how I came across that. And the process went fairly quick. It, I was able to look at the place, put an offer in and close within eight weeks. You closed within eight weeks from when you made your offer? That, that's amazing, even for a non-short sale. <laughs> All the other house purchases that I've been, I've been involved in, it was always withdrawn. It was pretty long, you know, all the paperwork and then, you know, between me and my employers and the bank and what they're looking for. So it was always really long, but I was really surprised that we were able to get this done within eight weeks. And actually everybody was, when I was at the closing, you know, from the buyer side to the, from my side to the seller side, everybody was surprised that they were able to get this done so fast. Did anyone give specifics? I mean, it's not like everyone thought it would take much longer. Did anyone give any specifics like, oh, this usually takes you know X number of months or X number of weeks? Nobody gave me a specific time, but most of the responses were, you know, it's just drawn out. That's, that's yeah. all they told me. It could take months. And they told me that even at the end of that, even at the end of the end of months of waiting, the transaction might not even go through. I was willing to take the risk because if I couldn't get it, at that price, then I was willing to just renew my lease at my current residence. So I, you know, I wanted to take that risk and why not, you know, to get it a little lower than market value. So when you say you were willing to take that risk, that makes me curious. So what would have been the downside 
if the deal fell apart at any point? I mean, would you have been out money or just time? Did you put any sort of, um, did you spend any money on professionals, like advisors, brokers, or attorneys to help you, anything like that? Yeah, the only money I would have lost, I mean, I would have gotten my, de- they asked me for a 10% deposit right away. But um, the only money I would have lost is appraisal and title search. And for folks who don't know the ballparks, appraisals are what, like 100 bucks typically? Around 600 to 800. And then the title search? I think that's around 1500. And for anyone who doesn't know, that's um, where you hire a, a company that, that is good at researching um, property records to make sure that the person who's saying they, they own it actually owns it and other issues. Is that right? Right. Usually the lawyer handles that. So what I did initially was after um, I saw the house and I wanted to put an offer in, I met with my lawyer right away and I told her what I wanted to put it in. And she, she made the offer right away and she did the title and, and part of her fee was to do the title search. So you're talking about uh, Elizabeth Kim uh, out in Bayside. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So we talked about this by email that this would not really be in your wheelhouse. So you can just kind of say skip, but um, are you able to talk about comparing buying a foreclosure versus buying a short sale? So, this is also my understanding. I didn't. I was never involved with the foreclosure, mm-hmm. but from the people that I've talked to in the industry, they told me that you know, if the bank's willing to let you sell the house for what what less than less than what's owed, that's considered a short sale. But if and and the owner still actually has the house in a short sale, whereas in a foreclosure, it's gone over to the bank and then they're taking a bigger hit. So the banks actually prefer, or the mortgage holder actually prefers that you do a short sale over a foreclosure. And that makes sense, right? Because foreclosure means they have to go to court, sue you, get you out, and then you know, there's a lot of extra steps and costs probably. Yeah? Right. And also, you know, the from what I heard was that the, since the person that's living in the house or, or, you know, that specific residence, they don't really take care of it anymore once they stop making payments. So right. most of the most of these houses will be in really bad conditions. This is really out of order, and this is sort of proof that um, I'm new to this and I need to practice. So <laughs> bear with me. Can you just sort of tell us the story of your personal your personal story of getting involved with the short sale, sort of starting from how you stumbled upon the listing and where you're at now? So I was looking at a lot of houses in Long Island, anywhere from New Hyde Park to Mineola, Williston Park, Plainview, Syosset. Those are the main towns that I was looking at. And when I was looking, you know, so every day I would do a research on Redfin or Zillow or Trulia. I would just look through it every day in, all, in those specific towns. And there's actually a house that I wanted to look at that was next to that house. It's It, it was pretty identical looking. So I went to go take a look. And when I was there and I was talking to the sales agent, I asked her about the house next door. That I've seen that as a you know I've seen that listed as a short sale, and then she knew about it and she got me in touch with the broker that was or a sales agent that was handling that house, and that's how I got that's how I fell into that house. And once I took a look, I talked to the sales agent. They told me a short sale. They told me um there's some offers already, but it doesn't hurt to try. So I put an offer in, and the the process is a little bit different because normally when you buy a regular you know, when you when you purchase a house, you put an offer to the owners, and it's up to the owners to decide whether to accept that or not. And then you can hire a lawyer to put an offer in. You put your deposit, ten percent usually, and then you get your paperwork together to get the loan. But in this case, nobody, you know, we submitted our offer, but I wasn't sure if it was accepted or not, and we never got a response from their bank. And my attorney told me that we should just proceed as if the if the loan was accepted. So we proceeded to get all the paperwork ready. I started my mortgage process and maybe a week or two into that, I got a response from the, from the bank saying that they, they'll accept that price and to, and they, they actually wanted to close within a month. And my lawyer actually asked for an extension because we weren't able to do that within a month. I'm still blown away that you closed on a short sale that was not all cash that you had to get financing for too in eight weeks. I mean, that's just insane. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was actually surprised myself. I was very surprised. When I first, when the bank first got back to me saying that the offer is accepted, we need to close within a month. 
I knew that that even any like any loans, it's almost impossible to close within a month. So I knew that we had to ask for an extension. And even then, I thought at that point I, that maybe I'll lose the house because there's no way that we could meet that date. But they were willing to wait, give another another month, another four weeks, and yeah, and that's how that's how the whole thing went down. This must have been super sort of exhilarating and exciting to have that such quick, you know, everything moving so quickly. How did you and Judy feel throughout this process? Well, this is actually the first time for Judy to go through a mortgage process. I knew what to expect. I knew that these things take time because, you know, there's so many, so much information going back and forth and it's got to be done in a correct format. And so I, I know that these things take time. So I wasn't, and I, you know, we were excited to get a house for less than market at, at a discount. But, you know, maybe because I'm in the industry or, you know, I had to forego a lot of things. I, I forego the home inspection. Mm-hmm. And it's a risk that I was willing to take because they weren't going to see anything that I wouldn't see. And just because we were short on time, we skipped that. I guess not everybody would be willing to do that. Sure. But sure. that's one of the things that we had to take a risk with. And there wasn't that many chances to actually inspect the house because the person was still living there. And like I said before, a lot of, a lot of short sales or foreclosures from what I heard is that they're not in the best shape because the, you know, the, the, the person living there usually once they stop making, once they're not able to make payments, then they don't, they stop maintaining the house. From the estate perspective, I've heard of examples where, where the tenants not only stop taking care of it, but they're, they're angry that they're losing the house and they, they actually do things like they damage the place. So that's not great either. Yeah, I had the chance to meet the owners and I think um she was very attached to the house. I think mm-hmm. she raised her kids there and they went to the Syatsa school systems and when you know when I went to meet her I was I had my son with me and you know she enjoyed meeting me, just talking to me and you know I, I you know we just went over what we wanted what I was planning on doing, you know renovating a little bit and raising my kids in the suburbs like how I grew up. So I think she really liked that. And it looked like, you know, she was very attached to the house. So the when, when the brief, the short time that I had in the house, it didn't look like it was in bad shape at all. And I knew I was going to, I was going to renovate the place anyway. So I wasn't too concerned. So you mentioned that, you know, you, you talked about your story about how you kind of stumbled upon looking at this place because you were looking at the place across the street. Before that, were you actively looking for short sale listings or for deals? And if so, you know, how were you doing that research? I wasn't looking at those just because just from talking to everybody, I have a couple of uh, real estate sales agent friends and broker friends and even people in the mortgage industry and mm-hmm. everybody talked me out of it. You know, for me, I, I thought that's the best deal. So I wanted to find stuff. I wanted to find foreclosure sort of sales, but everybody talked me out of it. So I wasn't actively looking for it. It's just that, you know, once, when you start looking um, on these websites for through the neighbor, when you're just browsing through the neighborhood, you know, short sales kind of just pop up. So I was always interested, but I never really actively pursued it, except for this one. So compared to a normal closing or you know a traditional purchase, what are some additional costs involved with a short sale? Does a lawyer cost more? Is there more title insurance? Anything like that? I don't think there was any additional costs. No, just timing and risk, and I guess your time of you know. At the end, like, I don't know if, it, I guess it depends on your current situation, if you're renting or if you have to get out by a certain date or if you needed to sell your house to get this, I guess it, you know, but for me, I, you know, I was pretty flexible. So that's why I was willing to just take the risk of buying something at a cheaper cost, lower cost. What are some of the benefits of buying as a short sale? Uh, is, it, is it generally good for the buyer or I guess what are the good good parts of it? I think the only good part is that you're getting it for at a discount. Whether I mean, I mean, technically, it's just it just means that the bank bank's willing to let you sell it for less than what's owed. But you know, the person, the first person, could have taken out another loan, or you know, their their mortgage could be really high. So you can't. I can't really say that it's in my situation. It wasn't a big discount, but I knew that. I might have saved about 10% because the house next door is identical and they just sold for $60,000 more than what I bought it for. Just to be real clear for anyone who is, you know, struggling with the math, if we're talking about a $500,000 house, I mean, you're talking about a $50,000 savings and that can be a huge difference for a lot of people, yeah? 
Yes, in my situation, it was ten percent. Uh, I've great. heard that you know you can. Some people have gotten it for much cheaper, maybe twenty percent lower than market value. But I don't think you get anything really, you know, at a steep discount because at that point, then there's no, there's really no point in selling it as a short sale. Right, the bank might as well foreclose then, right? Yeah. Just lastly, what are some of the drawbacks or cons of doing it? Mean, it sounds like your situation was, you know, fortunately for you, super, you know, smooth and lucky. But can you see or can you identify some of the some of the drawbacks that you'd want to warn other people about who are probably excited to follow in your footsteps? <laughs> Uh, no, actually, a lot of people ask me about the short sale, and and they're they're telling me that they're looking online, and and I always tell them what I've always heard before that it could be a drawn out process. There's a you know there's and there's always um even though you put in an offer, we we didn't get a response back for a long time, uh, not a long time, but we didn't get a response. You kind of just go through the process, just under the assumption that they accepted your offer, even though you don't so, know. Yeah. Even though you don't know, you just kind of go. You just under that assumption, you go ahead and pursue the mortgage. So that could be time consuming for a lot. I mean, you know, you have to provide a lot of information. It's not just a pre approval. You actually have to submit all your paperwork to as if you're actually getting the mortgage, and your mortgage broker has to do the work as if that's the mortgage that the loan amount that you're going for. Did you get your mortgage with so, Ace? I got it with Wells Fargo, not through Ace. <laughs> just, just wondering, you yeah, UConn boys or Connecticut boys. <laughs> well, the the only reason why I went with uh, Wells Fargo is because I've done another mortgage with them before recently for my Long Island City apartment. Mm-hmm. I did a refi, and they already have my information. Even though they can't use that information again because that file's closed, the broker I was dealing with just you know he just was able to expedite everything. So yeah, he probably knew that's why. You otherwise, remember. I would have gone yeah. through. How does this story end? Where are you at now? Are, are you moved in with White Picket Fence? Is it all a beautiful, happy ending for you? Uh, everything's good. We're still under renovations. Still getting, it's just getting renovated right now. That's why, like I was telling you before, I wasn't in an urgent situation to move because my lease is my lease is until middle of September. Mm. And when I started this, it was back in I think it was back in uh, May. I started this back in May. And then I closed at the end of June, and then I've had about a month to reno. So are you still doing fill-in renovations now? Uh, when are you guys moving in? Expected move-in date is middle of September. I want to circle back just one second uh, in terms of the drawbacks of short sale. Uh, yeah. You talked about how you know you weren't allowed to do an inspection, but you didn't care. You you personally didn't matter. It didn't matter to you because of your personal expertise as a uh, developer and contractor. But for somebody who doesn't have that expertise, who doesn't have the eyes to to examine the property on their own, that could be a risk area for them. Yes. Yeah, but you know, for the, it wasn't that they didn't allow me to do it. It was just in the interest of time because when uh, we submitted the offer, they wanted to close right away. And in order to close right away, I didn't want to wait another three four days just to wait for an ins- to set up a home inspection, and then wait another day or two for the report. So I think I feel like without the home inspection, we probably shaved about three to four days at least. Dave, can you tell us a little bit about your business and you know what you do and the kind of people who you really help out? I uh, mostly we I, I do new construction under seventy five feet, and I work in mostly Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Queens. They're usually mostly um, commercial. I would say about 80% commercial buildings and 20% residential. Uh, yeah, I start. I, I get involved from anywhere from purchasing to construction and then um, selling at the end. Um, that's part of my business. And but majority of it is uh, it's just construction to actually have clients and investors um, to work for them to to build a building from start to finish. And to get them the certificate of occupancy at the end, and all the sign-offs for for the job application. Are you taking on new new clients, um, new developers, or or de- uh, investors? Yeah, we always uh, we're always looking, and and our business is growing. We've done a lot of Asian banks um, in Flushing. We've oh. done a bunch of townhouses in Manhattan. We've done a lot of commercial buildings in Flushing. Uh, we did a 
we worked on a commercial building in College Point that was sitting on about five four point seven acres. Main most of it is parking, but you know the building itself is about seventy five thousand square feet. That was probably our biggest project. But I generally stay away from you know single unit renovations or things like that because it's just uh, too small of a job. Thank you for listening, sir. Shall I add you to the Park Industries Central Database? Just go to anthonyspark.com to join our email newsletter. Good day, sir.